Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future of health? I'm talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation at Health 2022. And I'm catching up right now with Steve Yaskin. He is the CEO of Health Gorilla. Steve, it's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks for having me. I heard a lot about Health Gorilla. You guys are in the data interoperability space. I haven't talked interoperability in a while. I haven't gone to a hymns in a while. But so I'm wondering though, if you can kick us off, talk to us about Health Gorilla and what you do high level. And then we're going to walk through each bitty bitty bit of it so that I understand what's going on. That's good. Uh, it's a mouthful, okay. interoperability, <laughs> see what yeah. I did there? Uh, a lot of people can't even pronounce it, but we strongly believe that uh, data is this big equalizer in a healthcare space, and Health Gorilla was created to shine the data light in every dark corner of the healthcare system and expose inequality, expose various price non-compliance things, and definitely the focus is on the privacy. Mm -hmm focuses on making data, clinical data, a commodity while maintaining a privacy and access to that data. Okay, so let's talk about that, making clinical data a commodity while maintaining the privacy and the access to the data. Okay, so let's talk, let's pull that apart. So what do you guys do? You're aggregating a whole bunch of patient data, right? Uh, so uh, generally speaking, Health Gorilla has been built, building the bridge between the public sector, the compliance, the regulatory space, and the private sector, which is not an easy task to pull. And uh, on one side, we are worrying, we are implementing various rules and procedures around privacy and data compliance, who can access this data for what purpose. And on the other side, it's not gonna work unless you have incentives on the private sector, right? And there's definitely people that need to get data. There are people that don't wanna share data. So there's a lot of controversial things going on. Providers not always willing to share data with payers. Payers always want to get data, but also not willing to share data downstream. So there's a lot of hurting mentality still. It's my data, but there's a bigger philosophical question that's been going on in this country for quite some time. Whose data is it? Yeah. Who has ownership of the data? Patient says, look, it's my blood. Yeah. It's my data. Whose data is it, right? Then doctor says, you can't even read that data. It's chemical analysis of blood. I am the one ordering that blood test, so I can interpret it, but only I can do this. I went to school for 20 years to do that. Mine. So it's my data. Lab says, hey, you sent me the blood sample. I actually produce the data. By law, I have to protect the data. And Healthland comes in and says, hey, I pay for all of you guys. <laughs> so I buy this data, it belongs to me, right? So Health Gorilla said, it's a wrong question. Wrong question to ask. Uh, data is out there, there's a lot of you know, touch points to that data. So the real question is who can see the data? So our goal is to aggregate it and then using go government regulatory space, which we'll talk about in a second, TEFCA, the new law, uh, 21st Century Cures Act, and the latest advance of that law called TEFCA, defines who can see the data. So our job is to make sense of the data, put it in a meaningful, actionable, organizable form, and then apply government regula regulations to it and say, okay, you provider, prove it. Okay, we see you provider, you're a patient, prove it. You can see your data based on the government defined privacy rules. Okay. If it makes sense. It makes sense, but here's the thing that doesn't. All right, so Mickey Tripathi, National Coordinator for Health IT, at ONC. I'm so sorry, I'm going to say this to you, but I have a Mickey Tripathi ONC Tefka Explainer video, folks, that you can go and find on my YouTube channel. I've watched it twice and I still don't understand Tefka. Can you explain Tefka? Uh, <laughs> if Mickey couldn't do it, I don't think I no. uh, it, It's still early days in okay. Tefka. Tefka is still voluntarily. Okay. Uh, we so what does it do, though, for those who may not be familiar with it? TEFCA establishes a floor for the interoperability going forward. Okay. It actually brings a new era. And uh, TEFCA, yeah, TEFCA uh, is uh, based on HIPAA, the law that yeah. was created quite a while ago before you know, Al Gore invented the internet. <laughs> so you know how old it is, yes. bad joke. But uh, we have a lot of advances in technology these days uh, that HIPAA kind of needs to get upgraded in, in to get in line with the latest advances. But Nevertheless, um, all the current regulations still have HIPAA at the core. And TEFCA is the new regulatory space that we're trying to establish. Mickey uh, actually did tremendous amount of work over the last two years, actually putting pedal to the metal and accelerating that. Um, and TEFCA stands for Trusted Exchange Framework Common Agreement. So it has right. two parts. One is technical called QTF, qualified 
framework, technical, technically speaking, and another one is common agreement, which is the legal compliance and the flow downs, and everybody has to sign on to common agreement. Uh, government realized that uh, they cannot uh, police, I don't know if it's the right word, compliance yeah. with the regulatory space that they're trying to establish, so they created an organization uh, called RCE, Recognized Coordinating Entity, which uh, is the Sequoia. Uh, project which has done equally tremendous amount of work yes. <laughs> and uh, the next step is uh, creating this uh, qualified health information networks out of existing HANs okay. so people will get organizations will get that queue in front of their name Ooh. and this is coming in a couple of weeks literally awesome. in, in Q1 definitely January uh, government already said we're going to be celebrating first cohort of QHINs, as they're also known. And QHINs will be the networks that will uh, establish the ground floor, specifically talking about uh, six permitted purposes that government is establishing. Who are you? Why do you need data? Can you read this data? And it's all based on USCDI core, okay. which is the set of data that must be shared. now. QHINs will be sharing data between each other uh -huh. with no monetary exchange. Ooh. Yes, so that's a great that's thing, cool. and that's how you establish that floor. And uh, QHINs will um, use various models, use various governance. So being a QHIN is not an easy task. It's okay. all about governance. It's all about compliance. And not everybody, I, I want to say not everybody would qualify, but definitely not everybody wants to be a QHIN. Yeah. Sure. It's an it's an enormous burden okay. to carry the power of that. Of course, um, huge responsibilities come with it. So, what's Health Gorilla's role in all of this? Yeah, so we've been at it uh, for a couple of years now. We've been working on uh, making sure that we're compliant with the QTF. So we started with the technical mm -hmm. part. It took us two years. We've been definitely working on um, security. So high trust. SAC 2 compliance, there's a lot of steps that you need to go through. And uh, we, I can share that we can. We, we started applying for the QHIN status a couple of months ago. We submitted an application, we're in the process of being reviewed cool. That's awesome. right now. So hopefully, uh, I can't make any judgment here, but we're in the process of certifying for QHIN. Awesome, that's great. That's really great. That's con congratulations on Thank that. You. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on, on that big news. That's a really great. That's a really great designation. And I, you just said it's it's taking on a burden. So well, good luck yes. on that. All right, talk to me a little bit about the business of Health Gorilla because I, I understand you guys have raised quite a bit of money. You've yes. raised eighty million so far, and yes. I'm, I'm not sure where you're at right now. But talk to me a little bit about that side of things. Uh, yeah, definitely creating a national presence of that magnitude requires a lot of capital. Yep. Uh, we are based on a SaaS transactional model, mm -hmm. so we are focusing on a treatment purpose. Remember I mentioned six yeah. permitted purposes. Yep. Today what works is treatment. So we are uh, working with uh, nonprofit organizations like Commonwealth, Care Equality. In fact, if you look at my executive um, people here working at Health Gorilla, a lot of them started this organization, okay. so we have uh, Jitin Asnani, who started Commonwealth. We have Dave Castle, who was executive director at uh, Care Equality for some time. We just uh, got lucky enough, uh, Stephen Lane joined us, who is involved in a lot of organizations to further promote interoperability. So I have hired people that are much smarter than me. Yeah, it's a great team. But uh, we've been at it for uh, two years, and uh, we are focusing on the treatment purpose, and we're also already focusing on the consumer access, which is the next, uh, I call them unlocks, okay. that is coming in Kuchen in a probably a short period of time. So all That's the consumers cool. should have access to their data. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, if once we're successful, data will be commoditized. Access to the data will be commoditized. So the next goal is data derivatives and making sure that the data is clean. There's still a lot of garbage out there going through the system, garbage in, garbage out. Yep. And um, the biggest thing for Health Gorilla is uh, what does data means, right? So what, who can say that we have complete data set for you, that we know everything about you, right? Do you know my social determinants of health? Do you know where I live? Do you know the population index as compared to my health? Do you own a house? Do you rent? Do you have a yeah. car? And uh, social determinants of health, genomic data, genetic data. Um, financial data. Financial yeah. data, socioeconomic data. 
affects your health yeah. in a big way. Recent studies show that. So we're on this constant quest, discovering, hunting for, and bringing new data back into future Tefka world and building more knowledge about the patient that we give out for permitted purposes. So that's what Health Gorilla does. Awesome, love it. Steve, th thank you so much. I, it, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you and hear about your business. And here also, thank you so much for going into Tefka and explaining all of that. Yes. Because I think like you're, you're right, this is the kind of the future of data. And so it's, it's exciting to see um, your company take such a lead role in, in providing that ground floor for, for this equal data exchange. Awesome. Yes, Very absolutely. Cool. Well, Thanks. thank you for joining me. Thank you. I'm Jessica Damasin for more interviews with the who's who of health tech as they are changing the way that they do healthcare. Um, head on over to my YouTube channel it is youtube.com slash WTF Health. We'll talk to you guys real soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye.